All right, today we're working on the Cadillac today, the CTSV upgrade into the single mass clutch. And here's the Corvette C6 throw out bearing, and here's the CTSV throw out bearing, or release bearing, with the throw out bearing course up top right here. But uh, as you can see, the hoses, the piping coming off the side of them is a lot different. That's all one big piece. That's the C6, this is the CTSV. And a lot of guys run a spacer down here because they get this thing brought up. That's the problem is let's see if I can get this. The gap on the bottom there make up the difference for that flywheel. But uh basically thing you want to do is be able to measure your distance from this to your clutch fingers. That's what I want to show today. Also, the difference with this is it's got a shorter bleeder. So you have to swap that over. In order to do the measurement right on these, you gotta pull off. Pull this thing apart. I've just got a little piece of metal right there. We gotta tap that off to get that thing to slide all the way up. That's all it takes there. There's a little ring. Put it to the side. And you just pull this off together. So you got a little spacer here at the bottom. It's like a spring keeper. Dust shield. There's the C6 bearing or six cylinder. In order to put this stuff to fit, you gotta notch, I notched the case here. You can see from here to here I cut. You'll see they get this hose to pipe to fit. Those bolts are snug. You can see over here how that clears now. And I bent this upper part a little bit to match the housing, bill housing I put on there. Make sure that fits. But here's how you measure the right distance. Y'all add off. What I do is take take this thing apart. That way you get a right measurement with all this. That on here. I guess you don't mean that a steel shim, but have it all like that. Now it's all off. That's as far back as that bearing's gonna go when it's in use. And we're gonna use a straight edge. There's the caliper and the caliper. Hmm. And what I do is measure, I've already measured this one time before, it's about two inch gap so it's like one nine three is this uses a spacer for the other side if I put it there you know against the release bearing and come over here or measuring from the release bearing to the side I use this for a gauge on this side it's actually two and a half
had the wrong socket. So use this socket. Yeah, you get 2.517 is what I got on that. Bring it over here to the car. All right, so now we're right into the car. Got everything torqued down, got the bell housing installed. Same straight edge. We're trying to measure from here to here is what we want. We're going to end up measuring so all that zeroed out. Looking at 4.798. Let's see if we can get that. Yeah, 4.80. And then you take this measurement here. Take that measurement off of that number. We'll go over here and write it all up and see how our math looks. All right, so over here, we're gonna write on these numbers and figure out what it actually is. So we had 2.517. That was from the release bearing to the housing of the transmission. And then in the car, we had 4.800. And that was with the thickness of the straight edge, which was 2.214. That gives us 2.586. So that's our actual clearance from that. And then, um, yes, you know, so you take that, and then we take this 2.517, which is this, our clearance from the bearing to the transmission face. And that gets us 0 0.069, which is about 1 16th. And you want no more than, no more than an eighth gap. And you want, a, you want some gap, that way the clutch can break in. Because as the clutch breaks in, the fingers are going to move out. And if you don't have any clearance at all, it'll move out and ride that release bearing the whole entire time. So... Yeah, I got a sixteenth. You at least want to, you want no more than an eighth because you want some room, and that makes shims. Uh, tick performance makes shims that you can get to space this thing out, spaces out the actual release bearing to move it out. So most of these LS what I've been reading most of these LS six or LS seven release bearings, the C six release bearing the one I'm using now with the green cover, don't need no shim at all. Um, but that's it. If you have any questions, hit the comment button below. As always, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.